<laughs> Slow down, boy. Good lad. Hey, girls. Hey, you lady. So, um, we've got Millie's ultrasound booked for the 3rd of May. So, all exciting. We just kind of have to wait now. Um, she'll be about 37 days then. So, we should see if there is anything in there. It'll definitely be visible. I am still quietly confident that she is. Um, the, the positive signs are still going, um, which is good. Um, she's, uh, yeah, she's, she's definitely given all the early signs of, of hopefully being pregnant. So, we're gonna keep our fingers crossed. Um, so I'm gonna have a little chat about some of the other bits that we've talked about in previous video diaries, but for people who are just joining us for this litter. Um, so both Zeus and Millie are fully health tested. So this means they have had uh, their hips and their elbows x-rayed and then sent to the BVA for assessment um, to check that they're healthy and in good condition. Um, because although, yes, there are factors of both hip and elbow dysplasia that are environmental, um, there are also genetic factors as well. So the more you can limit the risks, the better chance your puppies have of having nice healthy joints and long life. And as you can see from Toki, even though she's 12, she's a little bit, you know, slower now and a little bit uh, less giddy on her feet, but she still moves around and runs about. And that's exactly what we want for our puppies. We want them to have nice, long, healthy, active lives. Um, so they've also had their eyes checked multiple times by um, eye specialist vets. So they have drops put in their eyes and then they get looked at with a... Um, like special lenses um, by the doctor to make sure there's no abnormalities. Um, again, you can genetically test for this, which we've also done, um, but there are some um, abnormalities that don't have genetic tests yet. So we get them checked by a specialist vet. Um, and then they've also had their Embark DNA test done, uh, which checks for lots of uh, genetic conditions, which are obviously um, hereditary, which they can um, be carrying and not have any signs of so generally with most genetic conditions for the dog to be affected so to show symptoms of the disease they have to have two faulty copies of the gene um, and obviously that would be pretty obvious with most dogs they would show um, you know signs of the illness um, throughout their life and you'd know that they've got it however they can carry the illness and not show symptoms of it so they can have one copy of the faulty gene so they don't get affected by it but if they are mated to another dog that also carries a copy of the faulty gene and obviously you would never know because they're not showing symptoms um, then they can have puppies that are affected uh, and obviously that is is an absolute no-no we don't want that at all um, it's completely preventable um, a DNA test will tell you whether the dogs are carrying the genetic marker or not and then you can obviously make choices to not make them together so Zeus doesn't carry anything um, so the, the two big things we look for is um, pituitary dwarfism, which comes from the German Shepherd side of things, um, and the degenerative myelopathy, which also comes from the Shepherd side of things mostly. Um, <laughs> you little bounce, Kira! Um, and uh, yeah, so he's clear from both. Um, Millie is clear for pituitary dwarfism, she just carries DM. So there is the chance that some of the puppies will carry um, the faulty gene. Um, most of the puppies should be clear, because obviously there's three clear copies and only one faulty um, within the pairing. Um, and, uh, and some of them may carry it, which is, again, is not going to hurt them. Um, it just is something to be aware of if they ever went into a breeding program later on, that their owners should also be aware of and be DNA testing them. Now, we will be Embark testing all of the puppies before they leave us anyway, so we'll know that pretty, pretty early on. Um, so if any are going back into the breeding program, we can select around that um, and hopefully look for placing the DM free puppies into the potential breeding homes. Um, because that's the ideal, you know, eventually we would love to have no dogs as carriers of anything, but it'll take a long time to get there. Because um, if we rule out all carriers this early on, we're gonna limit the gene pool very significantly. So whilst they can be tested for and bred from safely, um, then we will continue to do that. Come on, Kira! Let's go, Sassy!
and this will be Zeus's last litter. Um, he uh, he had a litter which Dax is out of um, with the Northern Inuit girl, and obviously he's had his accidental half a litter with Bella, which is where Kira and uh, her brothers and her sister are from, um, as well as the half siblings who are out of the intended father. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this will be his third litter, and generally that's as many as we like to let them have anyway, um, because you don't want to get what's called um, popular sire syndrome, where lots and lots and lots of girls are bred to the same boy, and then you end up with a bit of a genetic bottleneck. So, Zeus, come here please! Um, so this will be his, his third litter, and, uh, and he'll be getting neutered and retiring, because um, he's also eight this year, um, and the risks of testicular cancer and things start to get quite high um, as they get older. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to get him, him neutered as well soon. Aren't we, Fluffy Boy? Yes, yes. And also makes things a little bit uh, easier with him living with his two daughters who will be staying entire. Um, we don't want any accidents or anything like that because with all the best will in the world and uh, as all the best planning in the world, sometimes things happen, as we saw with our last litter. Um, and whilst it's the only time we've ever had it happen in, in 10 years of having entire males and females together, it's not a risk I'm willing to take. So he'll, uh, he'll be getting, getting this nip soon. Not that he has any idea at all, but yeah. <laughs>